Today, we're with Gun Talk Media's own Matt Johnson talking about Western Wyoming antelope hunt and how to navigate the law. Gun Talk Hunt is brought to you by Hodgden Powder, the gunpowder people. Benelli, dominate the skies. Silencer Central, silence delivered. Smith & Wesson and Timney Triggers, the world's finest triggers. All right, hey, welcome in, Gun Talk Hunters. How y'all doing? Uh, I'm your host, KJ, and sitting in with me today is Mr. Matt Johnson of Gun Talk Team. How you doing today? Oh, good, good. So you were on, we're going to get into this, but you were on a hunt, uh, your first Western antelope hunt. Yes. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a little bit embarrassing that we're just now talking about an antelope hunt that happened at the end of September. In November. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's, it seems like it wasn't even that long ago, but so much has happened in between then. Um, and so, but so much happened on that hunt. So yeah, it was a lot of fun, but yeah, it was and the, but the craziest thing is it was 90 degrees that one day. Yeah. And now we're here in Ohio and it's 52, <laughs> which I'm a fan of the cooler weather. Cause I know that means like more, more animals are getting out they're getting more active yeah. and so that, that's always good time um but it is important to say we're not in studio no we no. are at the national association of sporting goods wholesalers show yes. here in columbus ohio yes um and you know i don't want to get into too much of oh what's the show about and if you've watched our content, you've seen it. Yes. Um, it's a it's a sales show yep. for the industry. Yeah, it completely is. It's in, but more importantly, it's the first show for the industry. <laughs> yeah. In easily, well, we were in Alabama, but that was part of the industry. But the first, like major industry show in in a year and a half. Right. Um, and it's all about this is where the companies go and deal with their distributors and their dealers. Right. And as media guys, we come in and we've seen a ton of great new product. So there's a lot of new stuff coming, which is great to see that companies weren't so yeah. busy just trying to fill orders and get try and figure out the sourcing that there's new product coming. But everybody here is just excited to see yeah. each other again. Yeah, they're excited. They're excited. But, you know, I've noticed some other companies doing the, the kind of opposite of what you're saying is I'm hearing companies go, we've got new products, but we can't halt production of the products that we can't make enough of. Right. Yeah. And that's that's a little frustrating it is frustrating but the same but but as you get talking to them you find out why and it's like yeah. you just can't source the product here it's like but at the same time it's it's a business decision too with some of these right. guys of like do we slow down and what we're making that we know we need to fill to get the new stuff what's yeah. the trade-off there and some of them are like it's not worth it for us yeah and where i'm hearing more of that is from the ammo guys are like we oh, need yeah. to keep doing because the downtime there is downtime to change a machine over to change your caliber so for all you hunters out there listening right now if you're wondering kind of why some of that hunting caliber is short it's because i'm sorry to say but your nine your two two three five yep. five six and forty are way more popular and needed right now yep. than your 30 30 oh, yeah. or there was guys telling me they're getting calls like i need 35 whaling and they're like we haven't had that request in like five years. Oh, but see, we went to see. That's funny. You said thirty-five Whalen because we went to the Remington Ammunition Plant in yeah. Lone Oak, and sure as heck they were they were pumping out thirty-five. Thirty-five, Whalen. Whalen. and I was I was shocked because I was like, well, they're not neglecting those guys because right. I mean, there's not as much of a demand, but some guys want. There's it. well, and I found out through this show what's happening is, and a lot of hunters out there probably can attest to this that. When things started going awry and they start pulling firearms out of the safe or out of the closet, they're like, oh, I've got this from my from my granddad. Oh, yeah. And it's a, it's, and my granddad had a 35 Whalen. It's like, well, shoot, I need some ammo for this thing. <laughs> and all they had was like five shots. And they're yeah. like, I'm going to go buy a box of it. And it's like, yep. no, you're not. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm dealing with the same thing with a 4440 that yep. I can't find ammo in. So, I mean, so, you know, it's, it is what it is. But uh, what around the show, let's just. I mean, we're talking about the show. We'll get into the antelope hunt. I swear, I swear, I swear. We we'll get into it. What are you, are you seeing? Any new hunting products? Um, not not really. Um, I mean, I saw. I, I, I take that back. Go ahead. I saw Hunter Specialties over there. They've got. It looks like they've got a whole wall of like scents and they do and everything and, else. Um, the one I'm probably most intrigued. I mean, Nazar's got the new Model Twenty One yes. they're coming out with. So from a yep. hunter's perspective, there's that. Um, Esport and Esport and Hot Sun Firearms over here. They've got some new stuff. Um, there's there's a couple things, but yeah, it's this show is really hard because a we had some people back out. 
yeah. and some bigger players back out. But at the same time, not everybody's here. In general, right. just in general, the show is not always as big no. as as Shot Show is. So, I, not but not a whole lot. I mean, it's really this show to me seems more about the shooters in general. Yes. Um, which we all know hunters are shooters, but not all shooters are hunters. Right. But and not everybody, right. honestly. Like this is kind of a two-step distribution show, yes. so so a lot of the guys that don't do two-step distribution, they don't have a need for the show. Correct, correct. So if they're selling off their website and that's really it, like they really don't need it. Yeah, and then on the flip side of it, you've got some really large guys who are like, we already had these meetings a month ago, and exactly. we're already sealed. We deal with sixteen distributors or dealers, and uh, we're done. So yeah. they don't need to be. It's like okay, I get it, but they'll. So they'll deal yeah. later, but but okay. Let's get back on this antelope hunt. Yeah. Well, as we know, I did not. There's there's a story I do want to tell uh, because I think it's a lesson in understanding public land. Yes. Um, and there's a lot of details that go into it. Um, a lot of confusing details that go into it, and everybody was confused. Yes. Uh, which I think needs to be pointed out too. Um, but. It has to deal with your antelope. Yep. Um, so I didn't, after this story, it'll make a lot more sense on those, to why I did not dedicate the time to get myself an antelope. <laughs> <laughs> I've had two, I, I've I had, struck out. I've had two people ask me, like, wait a minute, did you just tell me that KJ coordinates this? And he didn't get them, like, yeah, but you'll understand why. I was like, <laughs> KJ, first off, KJ was involved in, was it three or four guys, four, four, four of us guys yeah. getting antelope, it was including my first well, he, three of us were the, yeah, was our first. Three. Thomas, because you were with Thomas. I was with Thomas. And, and he would, he, that's his second. Second. But and then my I was first, with, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. On his second. And then Kevin White's first. And then Kevin White's first. So two first and two seconds. Yeah. Okay. Still. So four out of the six guys I was with right. when, when they all shot their antelope. Right. And that's not because – it's just because I, I, I wanted to be there. I wanted to guide, and I felt like I was hunting. And at the same time, you were also the most experienced in that terrain, right. in that in that area, so it made sense in a lot of that. Whereas when we – just to kind of give a quick background to everything, when we started, the first morning, you, Ryan, Kevin, and mm -hmm. um, Darren – and Darren, And yes. went off together, whereas Thomas, Gary, and myself went. And our focus for Thomas and I – Thomas and I have – Obviously, more experienced hunters. Gary yes. Killingsworth, our web guy, has gotten into big game hunting, has not killed anything yet. And so our focus was, like, get him on oh, one yeah. first. Oh, yeah, 100%. Which he did, and he did it in true Gary Killingsworth fashion. Of <laughs> First shot was 308 yards. Oh, my god. Follow-up shot was 422, through the heart, dead. It was like, okay, now that's the Gary we know, yes. the shooter. Um, you sit there and go, how'd you miss the short shot, right? Like, Come oh well, yeah, because oh, he, he, he did. Hit. He actually missed a 225 yard shot. Oh, I did not know that. That was the at daybreak. We missed the That's first right. one at just over 200, and then he hits at 308, and then kills at 422. Yeah. So, but then anyway. later we get Darren, and we were on his for, um, and Darren was a listener, and he was great, and he put one through and down, and it was a blast, and that was day one. Yeah. We had four goats down on day one, and that was an absolute blast. That was, and it is fun. And then the work started the next day. <laughs> then the work started. Um, so we'll start on your antelope. So yeah, we yeah. kind of started out on this place that we that is public, but there's a railroad track before the before between the, the highway and the property. Yes. So that is that is railroad property. Railroad right away. Federal oh, federal ground. Federal ground. Okay. Um, and there are a lot of rules and a lot of finite rules that you may not be aware of. And I caution you, caution you, caution you, caution you. Yes. Um, you look into those rules beforehand. Yeah. And look into the rules by talking to locals and yes. local law enforcement because we had Onyx and we all – and every one of us had an Onyx map on us that was specific to Wyoming. And we had the antelope units marked, yes. public land marked. And when you pull it up, it shows from highway to the back of that property is all public ground. That's it. Which shows physically shows the aerial map of the railroad cutting through, but it blocked out as all public all maps. public land. Now, and that's not the case. No, and I'm going to caveat this and saying this is not an Onyx problem because right. Spoiler alert: We talked to local deputy sheriff and the conservation officer. Yes, and they both chuckled at us when we told them what happened and all this, and they're like, "Yep, 
we know it's an issue. And so we asked them, it's like, what's a better source? And they flat out said there really isn't a there better really. source other than talking to us, us, the law enforcement. Yes. And here's what it is. Now, to get into the story, since it was my goat and whatever, you and I are with, we saw, we were driving by the highway. We saw a nice buck with some does and like we're going to, Thomas dropped us off. We go through a to tunnel. Get a, a tunnel. <laughs> so what there is is you guys have probably heard of this, and you've probably seen these ant wild game animal bridges out west. Yes. Well, in Wyoming here, in certain places, there is these wild game and cattle tubes, yeah. because the public ground is also got grazing rights on, it, and these farmers and ranchers can run their cattle underneath the railroad tracks across the highway into a pasture on the yes. other road. Well, that's that is p- public ground is what we confirmed with the deputy. Yes. <laughs> because the fence goes up and around it, so you can go through that tube into the property, which We'd been doing all weekend, and unbeknownst to us, but we'd been doing that all weekend. Yeah. Like, this is the easiest access into that property. Uh huh. That's the only access, the only physical access into right. that property. So we did that. Where we got hung up is we knew the cattle fence was there, and we come down, and then the the antelope were just over a hill. There's no way we'd come up behind them without right. them spotting. So we hop the fence, scoot down, and we get up to them, and then the final shot was what 120 uh, yeah, yards. Yeah, 120 yards or something like that. Something like that. But before we get into that, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to jump in here real quick and hear a word from these great sponsors. All right, we're brought to you by Springfield Armory. If you guys don't know the Springfield Armory Waypoint 2020 rifle, that's a gun they brought out in 2020 and it absolutely crushed on all cylinders. It's lightweight and it's accurate. It's a premium carbon fiber stock with custom features you expect from all custom rifles, but this is the point. It's not a custom rifle. It's right out of the factory, ready to rock. But it's a low profile, no snag safety, trigger tech trigger, which is awesome because it's adjustable two and a half to five pounds. And it's got a Springfield Armory radial brake to reduce recoil. Find out more at springfield-armory.com. And Benelli, if you're looking for a new hunting rifle for the field, the Benelli loophole is a bolt action rifle that is highly accurate. And you know what? It hits on all the right notes because one, it's accurate two, it's lightweight. And you know, this is a gun that is Italian made and Italian design. So it looks exactly like a Ferrari race car. I mean, this thing's got all the right lines, but it's customizable to you um, if you want to change that length of pull, you have the ability and where your cheek rest also adjustable so we got that going for us and it features sub mo accurate moa accuracy uh so definitely head over to benellausa.com to find out more and silencer central now do you ever wish you didn't have to do all the running around and gathering of the paperwork and getting your fingerprints and you could just sit on your couch and get a silencer delivered to your door. Well, Silencer Central has developed a way for you to do that. So if you want to sit there, you can go ahead and do that because they are going to deliver the paperwork. They're going to work through it. They're going to give you the tools to do your fingerprints by yourself, and they'll walk you through the process over the phone or online. So it's really easy. And guess what? By the end of the waiting period, guess what shows up? Maybe a new Banish 30 suppressor at your door so definitely head over to silencercentral.com to find out more okay we're back talking with matt johnson of gun talk media and we're talking about an antelope hunt and we were right up to the point so we had hopped this fence and we were tracking this antelope and we got down to where we were breaking the shot and before before matt broke the shot i looked back and there was a truck watching us correct and i was like matt I don't want to be a downer, but are we about to do something illegal because this truck is just sitting here watching us? Right. And we looked at the truck and it's like, okay, first off, not a, a conservation. not a conservation truck. It's not a law enforcement truck. And it's like, well, we know we're getting close to private ground. Yes. And it's like, okay, maybe it's the landowner there that was coming there, whichever else. But bef- as we determined that, we both pull up our phones. Oh, both of us. And for five, I, oh, I don't know. It seemed like it five seemed minutes like at forever. least. We're looking and it's like, are we or are we not on? Or like, we're on public ground. Like, I'm, we're zooming in and we're we're comparing maps. Um, and that's a that's a little, I mean, I, I don't even think it's a pro tip for you guys. If you guys aren't doing that, it's, it's bad because right. you want to compare two mapping systems at least 
Um, and I, I, I would use a base map and an Onyx and, and make sure we were aligned with Google Maps and whatever it is just to know where we're at. Correct. And so we knew where we're at. And I have to say the part that we ultimately came down to is the maps kept showing us the same things like we're on public ground. And we looked at each other and it's like we are both – country enough guys to understand there are road right of ways that you cannot shoot from right and we know there's railroad right of ways and we know what those rough estimated distances are from the shoulder of the road and we looked at the railroad and it's like man we are a long ways away from this we railroad were. i mean we it's were. not it's not like we were you know 15 yards away from the tracks no we, we were a good 40 yards correct at least at least so we're looking at it it's like there's no way we're yeah. on the right of way because there is grass all the way down here the tracks are over there right it's showing public ground. We've got to be okay. Yeah. So the shot breaks, and 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 the shot breaks, and and we, Matt didn't hear the thud of the bullet. I saw the thud, and I said, "I know we hit. I know you. You right. knew you hit him, right? Because uh, the shots have felt great." Antelope runs over, and I was like, "Man, he's dead!" Like, and you're like, "Really?" I was like, "Yeah, he's done." Right. Like, and I'm looking, and we have enough public ground to where. It is in the clear. Correct. Like we, he fell on public ground because Correct. that's something that, again that you guys got to watch out for. And I actually had an antelope in the crosshairs. He was so close to that public private line. Yep. I did not feel comfortable taking the shot. Yep. Like I felt like he was on public land, but he was on public land by like five feet. So I didn't take a shot. Right. And that was earlier in the day. But you sat here. All of a sudden, the truck starts driving in the property. Right, comes over and we wave him over. Like, right, we feel like we've done a everything great job. We've done everything, yeah, yeah. And so we get over there, and he comes over and is like, "Hey, no," and he even confirms, "Like, yeah, you guys are on public super ground. nice guy." And he's like, "But you know, that's federal, that's railroad right away." And we look at each other like, "No, what?" We show when we show the map. He's like, "Yeah," he goes, "Just hold on." He's like. Law, the law guys are on their way. And it's yeah. like, now we're both so, like, oh, shit. Now, 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 at this point, I think, oh, my gosh. I'm not touching the antelope, leaving them where they are. Yep. Like, like everything stays where it's at. It right. And it's, it's nerve-wracking when you know, like, you were in the right. You did everything the right way. But, man, you don't want to do anything wrong. Correct. We strive and strive and strive to do our best. And... I felt bad for you because I didn't want this to take away from your experience. Right. But I guess this enhanced it, if you can say that. Right. So then to cruise through the kind of the rest of it a little bit. So short story is, oh, there is no short story. To no, this is right. a there long is, story. There is no short. The, I mean, the if, deputy sheriff showed up. Yeah. And he showed up first. Well, actually, the landowner's dad showed up first. And That's true. That was probably one of the coolest experiences of the of one of the entire trip. What a great guy. He is a fifth generation rancher. The guy who talked to us first was his son, which is sixth generation, who had a son with him who was seventh generation. Anyway, so, but the granddad who showed up came in the one-ton flatbed truck. Oh, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, you guys are clearly on public brown. Nice antelope. Good job, whatever. Well, then the deputy sheriff pulls up, so the, original, the son drives over to talk to him, and they're like, hey, can we – can we have our guy drive down the road and just to get this goat out of here versus dragging it? He's like, throw it on the back of my truck. I'll pull it up. I'll drive it out for you. And it's like, sweet. Yeah, so how cool was that? That was awesome. Like, it was like, all right, sweet. So we pull it out and drop it by the sher deputy sheriff. And we're talking to the de – I talked to the deputy along with the uh, landowner and myself. The three of us all stood there and rehashed exactly yes. what came through it all. And so then I stepped aside with the deputy. He's like, all right, walk me through this. And told him exactly what we just told you all. And he's like, well – I need your license, your hunting license, I need your driver's license. Not a problem. And now so, I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is horrible. We're, I, I just, oh, it, it stresses right. me out even now. But even I know how the story ends. Right. And right away he looked at me and we, he's like, so how did you get here? And we told him exactly, you know, we went through the tube, down, up, over, whatever. And he's like, well, how did you know? And so we showed him, we showed him the Onyx map. He's like, all right. And he's like, I don't fully know this tube that you're he talking goes, about. take me to it. So I'm like. <laughs> Really? And he's like, yeah. He's like, all right. So I hop in the sheriff's truck. And we drive down the road. And when you're coming up to it from, we were coming from the south, there is a culvert that angles out towards, and this culvert is only yep. like 12 inch culvert. And he's like, you're talking <laughs> like, that? And we're like, no, we did no, not crawl we did not through crawl. that. I'm like, keep coming up. There's an approach in. And he's like, oh, this. He looks at it. He's like, well, that fence that goes up over, he goes, that's the railroad fence. So you never set foot. He goes, that's okay. Yeah. He goes, you guys can get yeah. through there. He goes, that's totally fine. And he's looking at it all. And 
Like he's, he's almost. It almost seems like he was puzzled. Like, how did you guys know? Like, right. Like he, there was a little bit of bewilderment on his part of like. So then, so then we go back, and by the time we get back, the CEO is there, and I talk to him. Yep. I give him the story, and we're talking which, about it. I have to say, so it's Cody out there in Wyoming. Yes. So I know him. Like he oh, pulls yeah. up. Yeah, that was crazy. And I know him. Right. Um, and how do I know him? Because I call him when I come up there and say, hey, I'm going to be in your area, you know, and just have a friendly conversation with right. him. But he pulls up. He knows me. I know him. I'm like, OK, we can work this. We can talk through this. Talk through this. It's right. not going to get heated or anything like that. Right. Yep. And so on the drive back from the tube back. Well, then he gets the report back and is like, yep, verified Minnesota, no priors. And I was like, okay, that's thank goodness. I'm like, thank goodness. I'm like, I knew that was all good. <laughs> um, then we get back and talk to the conservation officer. And finally, the deputy looks at me and goes, you guys clearly tried to do everything right. And yeah. there is no source that will give you 100% saying this is where this, that, and the other thing is. He goes, but he goes, I, I have to. So he gave me a written warning, which I was like, dude, I completely appreciate. And I'm I'm glad you see it that well, way. That was the one thing that we did not. We thought 100 percent we were in the right, and it turns out we were just like it was like a 10 foot deal. Yeah, like we we lacked 10 feet. Yep. On the wrong on the yeah. wrong side of the yep. right of way. Which so the lesson learned out of it all is oh gosh, if you're shooting an antelope on public ground, make sure you're on the same side of the fence as that antelope. But at the same time. I mean, well, there were so many lessons learned, and it's like, man, that right of way, that railroad was way bigger than I ever would have given it credit for. Oh yeah, and I that's, mean, and I think that's that's one of the things that we just weren't clicking on, and it just, you know, we tried, we pulled up, and, and man, I I was like pulling up like, like Google, like right. trying to like Google right. like how many yards is the right of way since of a railroad, and since we've been back. I have actually looked for maps that show railroad right away. Yes. I cannot find one. And See. so the data to find that is buried deep somewhere, but right. takes a lot more than what I could find. I, so I'm just taking the word from both the deputy and the CEO that. And they, they are most likely the ones that are going to be in no. the know. Right. But the problem is, is that they were even confused about it. Yeah. And what I, what I appreciate the most out of it all, and I, and we even talked about this at the time, is like we wish this was the case in more places both cody the co and the deputy sheriff is they were so level-headed and yes. conversational about it. it's like okay we're gonna be very real about i mean yeah, there, there we was no very angst, open. they were not trying to get us and i think also what happened i mean in the landowner to his credit he did everything right he's like and he told yes. we talked to him before during and after and he's like look i'm not trying to get anyone in trouble yeah i just want to make sure everything's on the up and up but and at the same time He's also a landowner where they sell outfitted antler, yeah. a, antelope hunts. So it's like right. he's like, I don't want anybody cheating my animals. Not necessarily his animals, but cheating, <laughs> cheating the game laws. Right. And then also taking revenue out of his pocket because some animal got shot. Which, right. which I don't as a, mind, as a farmer's like, kid, it's like I can completely appreciate because yep. we've had plenty of waterfowl guys jump on our land. Oh yeah, as kids growing up and or in, anyway, so we just want to we we strive to do the right thing and and. And that's part of like talking it out and understanding the area that you're you're hunting. If there's railroad tracks in there, right. you better look over it because you cannot cross a railroad with a firearm. I was just gonna say the same thing. I was like, do you never can't. ever cross a railroad with a firearm at Unless all. Unless there's a road going across it. And a, yep. So like if you're walking down, you can't just take a firearm and walk across just some random part of the railroad track. Uh, and that goes for every state wherever every you are. State. Even, so it's whitetail season, guys. And you're walking on. It's like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk this track and walk that. Do not, don't, don't do because it. Because as soon as the CO gets you, what happens is that becomes a federal offense. Right. And when that's a federal offense, your gun's gone for a while. Yeah. And your hunting privileges can be gone for a while. And that's that's a scary because I I get a lot of guys will walk tracks. Yep. They and, will. And and or they'll sit don't, tracks. Please don't. Or they'll sit tracks. Or yeah. they'll sit on the edge don't of them do it. because it's opening. And they know the deer are gonna cross them. And know those those railways and all that the right away and yeah even that part because like there's a set of railroad tracks that run behind my house and i walk back there and look and i'm like that distance from the fence to that railroad is not the same as what it was out there now i don't know if it's right. because it was a bigger high speed lane out there or, right so i i'm not again i don't know <laughs> it's, but it's a the right away back thing. in minnesota is not the same as it was in wyoming nope they're different so um i'm gonna jump in here real quick we're gonna talk about product on the other side of these sponsor messages all right gun talk hunt is brought to you by 
Timney Triggers, the world's finest triggers, and that's for a reason. These guys have been in business forever, and they've got a new trigger, and it's for the CZ Model 457 rim-fired rifles. So if you're looking forward to shooting that CZ Model 457 rimfire with a brand new trigger, this is your moment to do it. It's a machine using state-of-the-art technology and features Timney's new sear engagement adjustment lock designed for a user-friendly experience. Head over to TimneyTriggers.com to learn more. And Brownells, you know, Brownells, whether you're on the range, whether you're in the truck headed to the hunt, they got you covered for ammunition. And that's something that we're all dealing with right now. We're having a tr- we're having so much trouble trying to find ammunition. But Brownells has a wide range to keep you on the range or on the hunt. So head over to brownells.com backslash ammunition to find your next hunting partner, whether it's 223-556-65 Grindle, 308, 17 HMR, or 243 Winchester. Whatever you're shooting this season, they've got you covered over at Brownells. And by Hodgson Powder Company. So I don't know if you are new to reloading or you're a seasoned veteran. Uh, Hodgson Powder Company has you covered. Whether you are a novice and you just want to find out what powders to use, they've got it all over at Reloading Data Center on HodgdenReloading.com. But if you head over there, they you can put in what you want to make, what grain bullet you're going to shoot, and they give you all the powders needed to develop your own load. So head over there, HodgdenReloading.com to find out more. Um, it is definitely where I head to to make sure I stay on target. All right, we're back. We're talking with Matt Johnson of Gun Talk Media. We're talking antelope hunting um, and a hunt that we did together. Um, I struck out, and after that story and after living that, that was the, the antelope. St- <laughs> I hope it tastes all right. Because, oh, my God. Because it's, it was an hour and a half of not getting clean because we didn't yep. we didn't want to touch it. We didn't want to clean it there. Um, and we just kind of like sat around talking through it. It was an hour and a half. And w- yeah, it was an hour and a half. We got it cleaned. By the way, it did. It tasted amazing. Oh, of course, it's, it does. Um, but it was also eighty, little over eighty degrees by the yeah. time I because sh- I shot it at eleven thirty. Yeah. And we were all done at one, done with taking pictures and field dressing. Um, but yeah, by that by eleven thirty, it was already eighty two, eighty three yeah. degrees out. So at it's least. not like it was cold out. I mean, it wasn't screaming hot like the day before, right. but same different by that but by the time we we're done it's like let's go back to camp let's boil some heads and yep. pour a whiskey and be good yeah and and i was done like because i had uh, man, well we just, were all tired though I we mean, were all tired and i was just kind of like you know i've been on four hunts already yep. like because you like i got to be along with these guys and their hunts and i just kind of felt like you know that was a you know it didn't sour the end because you got your first antelope and, right. and i really appreciate you going on that trip because like sharing new hunts with people that haven't experienced something because matt's a seasoned hunter i mean the dude is out probably more than i am and and to see him be able to tag his first antelope yeah. was amazing it was awesome it was but it was the entire trip was that way it was so filled with of the trip i mean it really broke down to you thomas allen and myself or i see well seasoned hunters now yeah. i doubt i hunt as much as you do especially this year but you had <laughs> Ryan, you're working a lot. Our, our, yeah, right. Our guy, Ryan, um, waterfowls hunt more than anything else. So big yeah. game is, you know, new to him. His buddy, Kevin White, had never hunted. And so it was an Ever. absolute blast to, to see his first time, complete yeah. first time experience. And then Darren from Utah had been on a couple hunts, but he's like, I wanted to get into this. And just being around those and guys is the first time I've truly, and I stalked with both two of those guys. Yeah. And it was amazing. And you're right. It is fun because... It's like you're on the hunt. I've heard that before, but the amount of joy, I mean, it's still the same strategy. Oh, yeah. But now it was like on two of those, it was three of us guys trying to stalk through this and figure it out. That's, and it's that's like, tough. That was the tough part, but it, we succeeded, and we went six for seven, and we know we could, I mean, really We could have gone seven You would have gotten seven. one that afternoon. Oh, yeah. We know two places we could have went and easily set up shop and had yeah. one by six o'clock that night. Yeah. Um, but to be able to sit around camp after having so much success. Oh, yeah. Freaking unbelievable. It was. It was. So- Let's talk about a gear. Let's yeah. talk about stuff that you liked, stuff that you maybe didn't have as much luck with, but what gear like kind of stands out to you? So I was excited to come out with my new with with the shooting sticks that I had. And yep. they were uh, they were bipods. 
and okay. it was the trigger stick bipod and i just loved how quick and easy and convenient and lightweight they are yeah. i'd do it again i'd take the tripod the bipod just okay, was not yeah. as stable as i had so when i shot my goat with your tripod <laughs> it was way more solid <laughs> um, okay that's a that's a funny story just getting the shot off because they were we were on just a little bit of a crest of a hill and they were on the other side. Right. So I basically sat there and I would, I extended it all my legs where I thought was, because Matt's a taller guy. KJ so, clearly thinks I'm way taller than I am and I'm not. This is, for the record, I'm 5'10". Okay? So, so I like cranked this thing up to where I probably would shoot from, because we're about the same size. I got yeah, maybe a couple inches on you. But I throw them up and I'm sitting there at the base of it. And I'm like, okay, here's what you're going to do. You're going to stand up, put that gun in the pig saddle, and you're going to shoot that antelope. And it's like, got it. Just, I get up there, I get it in there, and all of a sudden, like, he's shit, like, I'm oh, on my tip tall. Tall. <laughs> like, you got to bring it down. All five antelope turn and look at us, and yeah. they watch So they watch I'm, KJ I'm, down I'm, there, screw the legs down, and I'm, he's coming down slow, so I'm like, there. there. And I lock them all real and quick. As soon as I hear them lock it, I, I release, and yeah, the, and, and then the story's over. Antelope. But, but that uh, was funny. That was pretty good. The other good. one, um, so... For the record, I shot that with the uh, Benelli Lupo. Yes. In in 270. Yep. Um, amazing gun. It was awesome. I had, however, brought out a Kimber 7mm odd eight right. mountain ascent, and the problem I missed one antelope. But I missed an antelope earlier in the day. He had a little uh, KJ problem because KJ sometimes has an issue. Of, yeah. Like sometimes my first antelope hunt, I missed a lot. Right. So I missed. I'm not we won't get on how many shots. Anyway, I missed the antelope and what it comes down to now that I'm back and I went to the range and shot it and my scope was off. What Why happened is that? the turrets were exposed <laughs> and walking for two days with it over your shoulder, it bumps There's the turrets. A turn. There's I a made, turn. There's I made a the turn. vital mistake as a hunter. <laughs> and this is the part that gets me the part that actually makes me mad is I know better that I should have when I sighted it in, I should have looked at where are the turrets, what numbers are the turrets on, because it's all one through sixteen or whatever this. else. And I you know what it really helps? Take like, a picture of it. Take a picture of it. Ching, ching. Yeah. And you I never it. did. So when I laid down on a goat earlier in the day, I didn't even think of looking. And I swung. I, the goat was at 97 yards. And Ryan was ranging and watching for me. <gasps> I saw this one. Oh, yeah. You guys drove yeah. by. We were driving by. But for the <laughs> listeners to laugh at me, I laid down prone at a goat at 97 yards on a water hole. And I swung it a foot high over his back. And it's like. Ryan looked at me and goes, you missed high. And I'm like, what? what? So I was like, no way. So I aimed lower, still swung high. And then by that time, the goats are like, okay, something's up. They like, boogered out. They get, back to, right, they get back to about 200 yards. They would not leave. And they stand up on the little ridge behind the water hole. And I go to shoot again. And now I'm like right on them. And it swings about eight inches in front of his chest, heart high. But it swung out in front of him. And well, then they were gone, gone. And Ryan, and I, Ryan looks at me and goes, what is your deal? And I, <laughs> like, I swear I've shot a gun And before. it's like, I know. He goes, I know this thing was sighted in. Well, yeah, I get home, and it's at 25 yards. I was two, inch, two and a half inches left and an inch low. Really? It was so far off. And so I That's bad. got it back on to dialed and whatever else. So bring that back circle is – if you're going west and know you're going to stalk a lot like we are, yeah. make sure, one, if you have exposed turrets like I did, you take a picture and you know where they are, or two, you make sure they get locked into place. Yeah. Um, the scope work, the scope itself was great. The glass was awesome. Right. But that's where I screwed up. And so the, looking back, those are the two things. If I had a tripod stick, yeah, would be better for me. It's more stable. Um because one well, doesn't add a lot of extra weight, and especially if you've no. got someone there to help you out. Yes. Um, yeah. And one thing I would probably recommend if you guys are going out, something that's just a that kind of popped up in my head. Um, on level ground, and it's going to vary, but if you can get on level ground, so from seated, yep, mark your legs. Yep. And if you're kneeling, mark, mark your, your legs. legs. And if you're standing, mark your legs. That way, if you're down and you're getting ready, you can go and pre-extend yep. those legs yep. to those distances. Yep. And that's one thing that I haven't do. But honestly, I don't know how many animals like those sticks have like people have shot off those yeah. sticks. Like yeah. it's it's a, a really great amount. But that's just an testament on how efficient those things are. Yeah, completely is. And uh, 
So I guess those would be the two things. I mean, everyone talks when you go west, you got to have a good pair of boots. And I feel like we all did. Yeah. Because um, I was not ready for how much, literally was not ready for how much walking we did. I knew I, we would, but at the same time, knowing we you were with Thomas Allen. Well, and I, you was, guys, I was with Thomas. Uh, see, you guys covered probably three times as much ground as we did. Yeah. Because I'm very much a run and gun. You're checking spots real fast. Right. Like you're not, right. I don't get out of the truck. And walk half a mile and now, then back. Now, to be, to be fair, though, when we killed, when Darren killed his antelope on Friday afternoon, that path that we took to get his goat, yeah. uh, what did we trace it? Oh. You traced it four times, three yeah. times more. I traced it two more times. Right. It, but it paid out in two more, in it two did. more goats. So it really did. We, it, it was just Thomas and I looking at us like, we just laid the path for future groundwork. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're thinking. We're thinking this through. <laughs> but there's a lot of good gear that I've, I used. Yeah. Um, I think one of the coolest pieces of gear that I haven't got to use, but I used like, like a couple of weeks ago, was a Gerber uh, Randy Newberg knife, like a Randy Newberg oh. design. Like, and and that was a gift from Darren, and I like a special shout out to him. I wasn't wow. expecting to get something from him, and and he was like, "Hey, I don't know if you have one of these, but here you go." That was one of the coolest pieces, of, like, nice. like knives that I've had. I think that's one thing that a lot of people miss. Like when you go on, even if you go on an outfitted hunt, is it's Yes, cash tips or cash is king and is great and all yeah. that sort of thing. But s simple it's things useful. like that, it's like, I mean, you're going to need a knife somewhere, oh, yeah. somehow. I mean, if you're like me and like many hunters, we probably got six knives yeah. too many. But something like that, it's like, hey, you know what? I just, they thought about it. Yeah. It's like, look, you clearly hunt. And I know you got a knife, yeah. but here's a good one that I oh, thought Oh, it's really serious. Like. It's serious yeah. business. You guys, like, check them out. But no, uh, would you go back? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'd 100% go back. Yeah. Because they, now knowing after the experience this year, and having and learning the whole private road access thing, <laughs> that's we, a whole that's, another set. Um, but so, just so people are aware, if there's a private road and there's a piece of public ground, let's say in the center, but the public road goes private to road. it, private road goes to it, you can't you get can't, to it. You can't get to it. That's considered landlocked. Correct. And. Um, but now, so being out there and knowing that, we really picked up on that real quick. Yeah. And signage is a big deal. And the, and landowners yeah. know that. If it's not posted, a sign saying private road, then you can, ac then you can actually you access, can access that road. Um, but anyway, that being said, wrote, I've got three names already written down because there is yeah. 7,500 acres that we never touched that we wanted to get to. That is like, dude, we want to get up there's there and access. we don't know. And so there's access. But would definitely go back um, that time of year again. I mean, oh, yeah. it was opening gun weekend, so – I expected to be a little crazy. Yeah. But, I mean, there's more antelope in Wyoming than people, I swear to God. Heck yeah, there is, and that's that's a good thing. So, uh, but if, and again, again, and I've thrown it out here, um, I throw it out almost on every podcast. If you guys have questions or topics you'd like for us to cover, yeah. reach out to me at kj at guntalk.com. We'd be happy to help you if you're looking to get into the shooting sports or hunting um, we're an open book. Matt knows all his stuff and, and we'll team up and we'll answer these questions that you guys have. And if you're looking at getting into public land hunting, reach out to us. We'll help you as much as we can and uh, yeah, point I, you in the right direction. I mean, I was excited for that because growing up as a kid in Minnesota, gun hunting, we've, I've only gun hunted public land in Minnesota Yeah, and it took me until bow hunting to team up with some buddies and get on some private ground. Um, but Next Friday, I take my daughter. We go back up the state state ground in northern Minnesota. With and I'm taking that Kimber with us this time. That's awesome. Um, and that gun needs redemption. Oh, but, uh, it needs so a big redemption. So public land is viable everywhere, yep. and it's a blast. And it's it can work out for where yep. no matter where you are. Yep. Well, that's it from this gun talk hunt. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and as always, you guys keep those muzzles pointed in a safe direction, and always be on the hunt.